Okay, what we're going to talk about now are one arch treatments versus two arch treatments. So far, all of the treatments I've shown you have been two arch treatments, and that is by far going to be far more common than a one arch treatment. But let's talk a little bit about when we can do one arch treatment. First off, any case that needs buildups is not a one arch case. The reason you need, you need buildups is because the opposing arch is causing an interference or a trap. For example, if you have a lower anterior crowded case and you put on some buildups and move those lower anteriors forward, when you take the buildups off, you're going to have a massive incisal interference. Okay? That can mess up the posterior occlusion and it's going to cause that case to relapse as well. So, a one arch case that needs buildups ain't happening, okay? If it needs buildups, it is a two arch case. So here's a case where we went ahead and treated this patient with just one arch. We treated her upper arch with PowerProx six month braces. You can see she had braces before. You can see the splinted retainers that are in place. And I asked her if she wanted that rotated lower incisor uh, taken care of as well. She said she was okay with that. Her main concern was the rotated um, lateral incisor that she had. So we went ahead and treated her with PowerProx six month braces and we also did a fibrotomy to make sure that that lower incisor will stay in place long term. Now when I treat a one arch case, I generally treat them with segmental braces, generally only bracketing upper canine to canine, or maybe first bicuspid to first bicuspid. And when I do a segmental case, it is actually a little bit more common in the upper arch. Um, the lower arch, you just tend, tend to have so many interferences that you can't move those teeth around as much. Now, if there's no interference, there's room, some overjet to work with, by all means, you can do a lower case as well. And down there, you would just bracket again, three to three or four to four. And we're just generally making some very minor corrections with rotations in and out discrepancies, I mean, mild crowding cases. We're not trying to do massive, massive, massive treatments. And when I'm using segmental braces, it's for cases that are where I just want to basically leave the posterior occlusion completely as is. The reason I'm not bracketing on a one arch case all the way back to the molars is there's almost always something uh, on the other arch that isn't ideal. So you're going to have a perfect ideal, say, upper arch against an imperfect lower can lead to a lot of uh, occlusal interferences and relapse. So if I am treating a one arch, it's generally segmental, either three to three, canine to canine, or first by cuspid to first by cuspid. So here's that case. We went ahead and we treated this patient from canine to canine on the upper arch as the goal was to correct a lateral incisor uh, and just some overall alignment issues. Now whenever I am treating a case segmentally, I always add some flowable composite on the arch wire right at the midline and then also right on the end wires where it's protruding past the canine. This is going to help prevent that arch wire from wanting to slide around and slide out of the bracket slots because there's just not as many brackets where it's tied in. I put it right behind the canine too because it's coming right around the curve of the mouth. That's going to be poking them in the lip if you just cut the wire and leave it. So add that little bit of flowable composite as a nice little comfort and anti-slide aid. So here's our case uh, with our gale that had just the upper uh, lateral incisor, very rotated. That was our main concern, was not concerned about the lower uh, lateral incisor crowding, and it wasn't causing an interference either for me to move the upper teeth. So we treated her upper canine to canine so we can alleviate that crowding and correct that uh, rotated lateral incisor. Okay.